Superman and Lois, Season 1, Episode 6, Broken Trust. This episode picks up right where Episode 5 leaves off. Jordan got away from Tag Harris and is on the run, but Tag is hot on his tail. Tag catches up to Jordan and attacks him again. Jordan is able to get to the device to call his dad and activates it. Superman arrives and Tag takes off using his speed. Superman makes sure Jordan is okay and then flies off after Tag. Tag runs right in front of a train and takes it off the rails and messes up a short section of the rails. Superman flies down to the train and quickly uses his heat laser vision to fix the rails and grabs the front of the train and sets it gently back down on the rails. Superman flies up over the train making sure it is okay while at the same time he is looking for Tag and listening for Tag, but Tag is already gone. Jordan gets back home and Lois is attending to Jordan's wounds. Jordan tells Jonathan, Lois, and Clark that he tried to fight back as Tag attacked, but he says that he is stronger and faster. Clark tells him that his abilities are evolving, but he can still get hurt. Jonathan asks what Tag wanted, and Jordan tells them answers to why he has powers and why he is at the DOD. Jordan tells them that Tag thinks he did this to him. Lois asks why Tag would think that, and Jordan tells them because he saw a video of the explosion the night of the bonfire near the mines. He tells them that Tag knows something is up. Lois and Clark send the boys out of the room and talk about all this. Lois cleans up the medical supplies that she used on Jordan. Clark tells her that he talked to her father, General Sam Lane, and he assured Clark that he was on this. Clark tells her what her father told him, that Tag escaped the DOD by some fluke and error. The DOD is putting together a plan to find him and get him back into custody. Lois gets frustrated and says that none of this would be happening if it wasn't for Morgan Edge and his endeavor at the mines, which is what destroyed Derek Powell and now has affected Tag. Clark says he flew over the mines and scanned the tunnels and says he can't see inside because it is lined with lead. Lois tells him that she needs to investigate further and get the evidence and hand it over to the authorities to get a proper warrant. She tells him as she is doing that she wants Clark to be focused on the boys and she is stressed because all this is happening at once. The next morning on the farm the boys wake up and come downstairs to eat breakfast. They are preparing for their football game in Metropolis against Jordan and Jonathan's old high school. Jonathan tells his brother that some of the players in Metropolis are talking crap about them and the upcoming game. They both sit down to breakfast. Clark is in the kitchen preparing breakfast when suddenly Jordan grabs the side of his head in pain like he is having a bad headache, but instead it has to do with his powers and heat vision and when Tag attacked him. Clark asks if he is okay and Jordan says that it's just a headache. Clark is unsure if that is really the case. Clark asks Jordan about sitting out of the football game tomorrow and Jordan asks why. Clark says because he's still recovering from what happened with Tag. Jonathan backs his brother up and says that it is Metropolis and that it is the biggest game of the season. Clark tells the boys he understands, but he also tells them that until they have this under control that they need to be careful and take the proper precautions. Jordan tells Clark that the game is really important and that it is important to him that he plays in the game. Clark asks him if he is 100% healthy and ready to go, and Jordan says yes. Clark agrees to let him play in the game, but after school, he's going to make sure Jordan is okay with some unconventional training and tests. Morgan Edge, along with his top minion, Leslie Barr, are about to open up the mines to the workers. Lois is there, hearing what Edge has to say and keeping a close eye on him. Morgan Edge goes over and speaks with Kyle and Lana Cushing and is giving Lana a new job to work for him. She is stunned and does not provide him an answer. Lois is looking around and Marcus Bridgewater is there with her. At school, Jordan and Jonathan are in the hallway at the lockers talking about the game. Jonathan closes his locker and Jordan grabs the side of his head again in pain from the noise. Sarah comes up and tells him that she is planning on going to the football game in Metropolis. Sarah walks away and as the school bell rings in the hallway, Jordan grabs his ears as the sound is affecting him and he drops to the floor in front of Jonathan and Jonathan kneels down beside him and Jordan's eyes start glowing red. Jonathan rushes Jordan to the restroom where there is no one around and tries to talk him down to control his heat laser vision blast. Jonathan says to him that that was not one of your usual panic attacks. Jordan tells his brother that since Tag jumped him that he has been hearing a really 
loud, high-pitched noise and that it is what's giving him the headaches. Jonathan tells him that he really needs to tell Clark about this. Jordan says no, and Jonathan tells him again more sternly that they must tell Clark. Jordan says no because if they tell Clark, he will pull Jordan from playing in the football game against Metropolis tomorrow. He says to Jonathan to let him have this one so he can shut the Metropolis football boys up who used to bully him and make his life miserable all the time. At the Cushing's house, Lana and Kyle talk about Morgan Edge putting people back to work and Lana's possible new position. She tells Kyle he should be the one to get this since he did all the work and advocating. But he tells her he is happy for her. The doorbell rings and Kyle goes to answer it and it is Lois Lane who is there to talk to them both about Morgan Edge and the mines. She tells them she has reason to believe that Morgan Edge is engaged in dangerous and illegal activities and she is there to ask them both to help her get into the mines so she can prove it. Kyle is not amused or impressed by what she is asking and pretty much shuts her down. Lois says to them that you both know that I know Superman and he is also looking into Morgan Edge. They both shut Lois down and decide not to help her. Lois gets up to leave and tells them that it may seem like Morgan Edge is helping, but deep down there is something very sinister going on with Edge and the mines. The boys arrive back at the farm after school and Clark takes them to the cellar down in the barn where his Kryptonian infant ship is and trains Jordan using a huge log that Clark used growing up to control some of his powers. He teaches Jordan how to punch the log and use control. Clark and Jonathan are there for support and are excited when he starts getting the hang of it. As they continue with the training, Clark gets a call from General Sam Lane who tells Clark that Tag Harris was spotted in Metropolis and how fast he is. Sam tells Clark to stay with the boys. He tells Clark he intends to take that monster down and Clark says to Sam that Tag is not a monster, that he is just a scared kid with no one helping him. That night at the Cushing's house, Sarah is sitting on the couch seeing what's on TV while Lana is on her laptop trying to find a babysitter for Sarah's younger sister Sophie for tomorrow night since Sarah is going to be at the football game in Metropolis and Kyle is taking Lana to dinner to celebrate her new job with Morgan Edge. Sarah tells her mom that she will stay in town and babysit her sister while she and Kyle go out to dinner. Tag is back in Smallville and is right outside the Cushing's house watching Lana and Sarah. The next day, the Smallville Crows are in Metropolis and the football game is underway. As of the second quarter, the score is Metropolis 13, Smallville 7. Jordan and Jonathan are on the sidelines sitting on the bench waiting to go in. Jonathan asks Jordan if he is okay, to which he responds that he is fine as he has his eyes on the guys on the Metropolis football team who gave him hell before they moved. The head coach comes over to Jordan and tells him to go in and stop the kid number 55 on the Metropolis team. The next play gets underway. Jordan all of a sudden cannot move as he hears the high-pitched noise and grabs his head and messes up the play and the Smallville Crows quarterback gets hurt. Jonathan sees an opportunity and goes over to his coach and asks to go in. The coach agrees and sends Jonathan in at quarterback. Jordan is still in the game. Jonathan goes in and the next play gets underway. The center snaps the ball and Jonathan takes it and backs up into the pocket and avoids a hit from his old teammate number 55 and Jordan comes in and blocks him out of the way. 55 ends up on the ground after the big hit he took from Jordan. Jonathan sees an open receiver and throws the ball to his receiver who catches the ball and gains big yards. Jordan goes over to number 55 as he's still on the ground trying to get back up and Jordan starts taunting him. Clark notices what is going on and he calls Jordan over to the sideline and grabs his face mask in a very stern voice and mad look on his face and tells Jordan to knock it off. Lois is back in Smallville at the farmhouse working on the Morgan Edge story. She's on the phone talking to someone who might be able to get her into the mine. As she is still on the phone, she hears a knock on the door and cautiously goes to answer it. On the other side of the door, it's Marcus Bridgewater who has two authentic inspector badges that they can use to get into the mine. Lois decides to use one and go with him. They both get to the mines and put on inspector hard hats and jumpsuits to blend in and to get themselves inside the mines. They make it past security and head into the mines. Sarah Cushing and her little sister Sophie are at their house just chilling out since their parents are out. Tag comes to the house to see Sarah to try and get help and he ends up kidnapping Sarah. 
Back in Metropolis at the football game, it is now in the fourth quarter with 27 seconds left on the game clock. Smallville leads Metropolis 35-13. to The ball is snapped and Jonathan takes it and fakes a handoff and gets past the Metropolis defensive line and scores. During the play, a handful of the Metropolis players grab Jordan and tackle him to the ground hard. They keep him on the ground by kicking and stomping on him, which causes a fight between the two teams. As Jordan is being hit and kicked, his eyes start to glow and turn red. The Smallville coaches and players and referees are able to pull the Metropolis boys off of Jordan. Jonathan and Clark get to Jordan and see his eyes. Jordan tells his dad he cannot hold in the power. Clark tells him to turn his head straight towards the ground and release the energy into Clark's hands so no one will see it. It is nighttime and Lana and Kyle Cushing arrive back at their house after their date. Sophie comes into the kitchen where her parents are and they wonder why she is still up. Kyle goes to check on Sarah and her room only to discover that she is not there. Back in Metropolis, Clark, Jonathan, and Jordan are in a hotel room for the night and they are talking about what happened at the game with Jordan's powers. Jordan says he's fine but Clark says, no, you're not. Jordan said he could have controlled it. Clark asked Jordan if there were any signs or symptoms. Jordan says he just had a moment. Jonathan comes into the conversation saying that what Jordan just said is not the truth. Clark turns around and looks at Jonathan and is in shock. Jordan tries to stop him from talking, but Jonathan says that Clark needs to know. Jonathan tells him about the first episode at school. Jordan says he had a migraine headache at school and says it wasn't a big deal. Clark is upset because Jordan didn't tell him, to which Jordan says he didn't think it was that big of a deal. Jordan says he knew that Clark would overreact and not let him play in the football game. Jordan tells his dad that he got to grow up and become Superman, and Jordan asks his dad, who am I supposed to be? Jordan says he wanted to be good at something, and Clark says that is not what his powers are for. As they are talking, Clark gets a call on his cell phone from Lana, asking him and the boys if they saw Sarah at the game. Clark says he didn't see her there. As Lana is talking to Clark, Kyle pulls up the house security camera footage on his phone and sees Sarah being taken by Tag Harris. Clark hears the other side of the conversation. Lana hangs up on Clark and Clark tells his boys to stay in the hotel room for the night and Clark flies off as Superman into Metropolis looking for Sarah and Tag. Meanwhile, back in Smallville, Marcus and Lois have entered the mines and are looking around to see what they can find. Lois asks Marcus, how do we know what we're looking for? Marcus tells her that he got his hands on some schematics and layouts of the mines. Lois asks him how he was able to look at those, and he says he has a friend who knows how to do some incredibly good hacking. Marcus finds a spot along the mine wall, and he starts precisely and carefully cutting into it. In Metropolis, Tag has taken Sarah to an abandoned building, which looks to be outside the city. Sarah wakes up after being accidentally knocked out by Tag back at her house when he suffered another episode of tremors and shaking. She is startled at first and he tells her that he brought her to Metropolis and that he moves a lot faster now. She sees a pile of shoes in the corner and looks at them. They all have the soles completely worn down on them. He tells her he is not going to hurt her and explains everything happening to him. At the mines, Marcus gets done laser cutting the wall of the mine and pulls it off and inside is revealed to be what looks like yellow kryptonite. Marcus calls it XK or otherwise known as X kryptonite. Kryptonite in its purest form, he says that these mines had the largest supply of it anywhere. Marcus tells Lois, there is your story, Miss Lane. Just then, Leslie Lar appears and says to them, too bad no one is going to read it. They both see her standing there with her eyes glowing red. Lois and Marcus grab their stuff and run away from Leslie. As they run, she shoots her red laser eye heat vision beams at them. Superman is flying around Metropolis looking for Tag and Sarah using his super hearing when he hears General Lane giving orders to his troops to find the kid. At the hotel, the boys are looking on TV at the news and on their phones to see if they can find any information on Superman and what is going on. They are unsuccessful to find any information. Jordan and Jonathan talk, and Jonathan asks Jordan if he is mad at him for telling their dad, and Jordan responds and says no. The Smallville football boys come to their room and say they're going out to celebrate. The boys reluctantly decide to go out with their friends to celebrate. Back in the mines, Marcus and Lois run into a dead end. 
Marcus quickly puts together a device that has a red type of laser beam which he shoots at Leslie Lar. It hits her and knocks Leslie out. Marcus and Lois quickly run out of there. Superman flies above Metropolis and concentrates his super hearing, listening for Tag and Sarah. He hears them and flies in the direction their sounds are coming from. Tag tells Sarah that the explosion at the bonfire near the mines was not an accident and that it was recorded on video. He takes out his phone and shows the video to her. Tag tells Sarah that he believes Jordan is responsible for what is happening to him. Superman finds them and lands near Tag and Sarah in the abandoned building they are in. He tells Tag not to run. Superman tells him that he is there to help him. At another location in Metropolis, Jordan and Jonathan and their teammates are just hanging out, throwing a football around and having fun, enjoying each other's company while celebrating the win over Metropolis. But the fun is short-lived when the bullies and the asshole team members from Metropolis show up and try to start trouble, especially with Jordan and Jonathan. The kid that was wearing the number 55 jersey on the Metropolis team named Cutter really starts trying to start trouble with Jordan. The more Cutter taunts Jordan, the angrier Jordan is becoming. Jonathan steps in front of him and tells Jordan to settle down and relax. Jordan doesn't listen and he goes to punch Cutter when Jonathan sticks his right hand in the way to block the punch and keep Jordan from hitting Cutter. Jordan's punch hits Jonathan's hand, sending a shockwave of energy through it, and the power of Jordan's punch breaks Jonathan's hand and wrist. The DoD find Tag just after Superman and surround the building they are in with soldiers on the ground and helicopters in the sky, circling the building with spotlights. As Superman is talking to Tag and Sarah, he hears General Sam Lane with his super hearing say, use any means necessary to take out Tag. Superman tells them both to come with him and no harm will come to him. Superman tells Tag that the DOD is coming for him and that he gives Tag his word he will help, but right now you need to trust me. The DOD foot soldiers breach the abandoned building with their weapons drawn and pointed at Tag. Tag starts having another episode of shaking and tremors. As that is happening, the soldiers start shooting at Tag. Superman uses his speed and gets in front of him to shield him from the bullets. Just then, one of the soldiers shoots from their assault rifle four green bullets all at the same time, which hit Superman in the left shoulder, which pierced his skin and sent him to the ground in pain. The bullets that were shot at Superman were green kryptonite bullets. Superman is on the ground in pain. Superman's eyes light up with his red glowing heat vision ready. He stands back up in pain and uses his right hand and painfully pulls out the green kryptonite bullets and throws them to the side using his red laser beams from his eyes and he shoots the beams out of his eyes and destroys the kryptonite bullets. Superman is now fueling with anger and rage and he uses his super speed and speeds over to the soldier who shot him with those kryptonite bullets and with his eyes still glowing red in a very demanding tone orders the soldiers to stand down which they do. Superman stops his eyes from glowing and steps back and calms himself. The DOD take Tag back into custody but before they take him away Superman asks them to remove the handcuffs. Superman speaks to Tag alone and tells him that he won't be alone anymore, and he says, I promise. Then Superman goes to the DOD to speak with General Sam Lane about what happened. Superman tells him he is disappointed he would use live rounds to try and stop Tag, especially ones fitted with kryptonite. As Superman is talking to the general, he hears his sons calling him, saying that Jonathan is hurt, so Superman flies off to them. Marcus and Lois escape the mine, and Lois is upset and demanding answers about what all went down in there. She demands to know who he really is and why he is really there, seeing as he is armed to the teeth. He tells her, you saw what I saw, and that is your story. He tells her that he can't tell her why he is really there. He says that he, like her, is trying to prevent something really bad from happening. Lois's cell phone starts ringing. She answers it and learns Jonathan is hurt. As she goes to get into her truck, she turns around and tells Marcus that their discussion is not over, and then gets in the truck and drives off. Back at the Kent's house, everyone is in the kitchen talking about what happened. Clark says the doctor said that Jonathan's cast on his arm and wrist will come off in six to eight weeks and that maybe Jonathan gets his full range of motion back. Jordan tries to apologize, but Jonathan just tells him to shut up. Jordan tells his parents, you guys know I would never do anything deliberately to hurt his brother. Clark tells him that Jonathan has a right to be mad. 
Clark tells him that his powers come with responsibility and that he needs Jordan to get that. Clark and Lois both know it was an accident, and Clark says he knows about the anger the way Jordan does, and he says whenever he is Superman, he has to keep his anger in check. He says to Jordan that once trust is broken, it takes a lot longer to heal than a broken wrist. Jordan goes upstairs to bed. Lois tells Clark about her adventure of the night in the mines and that she and Marcus were almost killed. The next morning, Sarah and Jordan get together on the Kent farm and talk. She tells him about what Tag said and what she saw in the video. She tells him that Tag thinks whatever happened to him was because of Jordan and the events at the bonfire. She tells Jordan that he can tell her anything. Lana and Lois are inside the Kent farmhouse and Lana tells Lois that she will help her find out what Morgan Edge is up to, though she says it's best to keep it between the two of them for now. Lois and Jordan talk out on the front porch about what's been going on and Jordan tells her that he thought having powers would make things easier when in fact they've gotten harder. He breaks down and cries as Lois holds him as he cries he starts hearing the same high-pitched noise again. He grabs his ears in pain and then collapses to the ground. Lois yells for Clark who uses his super speed racing out of the barn to the porch. Clark sees his son on the ground. Clark uses his x-ray vision and scans Jordan's insides and notices something is terribly wrong. He grabs his son in his arms, looks up at Lois, and says he must get him to the Fortress of Solitude right now. Clark, with his son in his arms, shoots up into the sky, flying as fast as he possibly can. And that is the end of Superman and Lois, Season 1, Episode 6, Broken Trust. Holy cow, can I just say what a freaking fantastic episode. This is so far the best episode yet. It was filled with the action-packed comic book action, a great and powerful story, heartfelt emotion, drama, brilliant looking special effects, and so much more. This one, I can literally say, kept me on the edge of my seat for the entire episode. This episode starts off with the action and ends with dramatic emotion and action. I will admit, as an avid Superman fanatic and Superman junkie that I am, I was not familiar with XK or X Kryptonite. But now we know that this is what is giving regular people these powers. They are not metahumans. It is just this stuff that is not just giving people powers, but it's also hurting them and even killing some of them for that matter. I'm glad Lois finally got to get into the mines and found out what was within the walls of the mines. However, I'm curious to see what Marcus, Captain Luther's endgame is with Lois and why he is so hell-bent on killing this Superman. Our Superman is not the evil black-suited Superman that was from his Earth. So I'm with Lois on this particular thing. After what her and Marcus went through in the caves and all of his special weaponry that she saw, I would be furious and demanding answers as well. And now she knows for the sake of Tag Harris, Clark, Jonathan, and Jordan, Derek Powell and his mother Sharon as well as everyone else in Smallville that she needs to expose Morgan Edge and she needs to do it fast. So now on to Jordan and what is going on with him. I am wondering what is happening to him since he collapsed on the porch and Clark had to rush him off to the fortress to save him. So what is the terrible ringing sound that he is hearing and that is giving him the headaches and making him lose control of his powers? Is it something wrong that's going on on the inside of him? Or was it caused by his encounter with Tag Harris? Also, after the football game, Jordan losing control of his eye blast laser heat vision there, he tells his dad that he is fine and that he can control it. <laughs> really? Apparently you can't control it. You said it yourself at the game right before it happened. You said you can't hold it in. Thank God Clark was there and was able to get you to release it without anyone seeing. I mean, gee whiz, kid, it's pretty obvious you can't control it, so stop lying to yourself and your dad about controlling it. Now on to Jonathan. I was actually thrown a curveball when it came to him in tonight's episode because after the game, when he and Jordan go out with the other football players and then the asshole Metropolis players show up and push Jordan to his limit, when Jordan goes to punch the asshole kid Cutter, Jonathan goes to stop him, and I for sure thought that that was going to be the moment we realized that Jonathan's powers show up and that he was going to block his brother's punch to Cutter. Well, I was wrong because Jonathan went in to stop his brother and the power and force of the shockwave of Jordan's punch hitting his brother's hand 
ends up breaking his wrist. As soon as I saw Jonathan trying to stop his brother, I was like, okay, here we go. We're fixing to witness Jonathan's powers. I was all excited. And then when it showed what happened, I was just like, oh shit, that had to hurt. But dang, that would have been cool if it had went down like that and the way I thought it was going to go down. Now for what I thought was the biggest moment of the episode when Superman goes to confront Tag in Metropolis and save Sarah Cushing, the DOD enter and try to kill Tag, but Superman gets in front of Tag to block the bullets coming at him when one of the soldiers shoots four green kryptonite bullets at the same time at Superman and hit him in his left shoulder and he gets taken down and as he is on the ground in pain he stands up and you can freaking see the anger and madness in his face and his eyes light up red. He stands and painfully pulls them out of his chest and super speeds over to the soldier who shot him and in a almost monstrous tone with his eyes still glowing red orders the soldier to stand down and I was just like holy crap I have never seen Superman so mad and angry before. This is something new but at the same time throughout this episode he keeps telling Jordan he needs to keep his anger and emotions and powers in check and not lose control and I thought for a second he was going to go against his own morals and advice and tear this guy up. Thank goodness he didn't. It got me thinking though maybe this scene right here if Superman does lose control this is going to give Captain Luther and General Sam Lane the proof they need to try and kill Superman but thank goodness Superman was able to keep himself in check. The part of that scene where Superman pulls out the green kryptonite bullets out of his shoulder, they should have done what they did in the film Superman Returns when Superman is lifting the big Kryptonian island that Lex Luthor made with Superman's crystals from the fortress laced with kryptonite. As Superman pushes it out into space, there's a quick shot of what is happening and it shows Superman's fingers and hands smoking and burning as if the kryptonite is literally burning his skin and showing how painful it looks. They should have shown a shot in this episode with a close-up of Superman's hands as he pulls the kryptonite bullets out of his chest, smoking and burning, just showing us what the kryptonite is doing. That would have been really cool. As far as Sarah Cushing goes, I wonder if she is going to find out about Jordan. Though I felt bad for Jordan because he wants to tell her, and he says to his mom that he had to sit there and lie to his best friend, his only friend. That was a sad, emotional, and tough moment. Part of me hopes he does tell her on his terms and that she doesn't find out from someone else. But I understand why he can't. It's really a no-win situation for him, just like it was when Clark was growing up when he first fell in love with Lois. I'm glad now that Lois has a new ally in Lana Lang Cushing to help her in her fight to expose Morgan Edge for what he is really doing. I think with Lana helping out, they can do more together and faster. The only downside is now it puts a target on Lana's back and her family's back. They are going to have to really be careful from here on out. This is the second episode in which Superman has been affected by green kryptonite. In the very first episode, Captain Luther stabs him with green kryptonite in the same chest area where he was shot with the four green kryptonite bullets in this episode. Also, in the Smallville show, Clark is shot with a kryptonite bullet and it hits him in the same chest area. Also, in the second season of Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, it shows Superman being shot in the same area of the chest with a green kryptonite bullet. It's always in the left side of his upper chest area above his heart. It's interesting that it's always in that area. I wonder if there's a reason for that or if they're just all kind of paying homage to each other. So those are all my thoughts on this episode, and I'm going to give Superman and Lois Season 1, Episode 6, an A+. Plus. This was a great episode because it has a little bit of everything for everyone. I love what they are doing so far on this show and I can't wait to see what happens next. I really hope Jordan is going to be okay and that Clark can find out what is going on with him at the fortress and save his son. Okay, that's it for this video. I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Good night. God bless. I love all of you and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.
get into the fortress. 